Good morning and welcome to Congleton Parish for this service of morning prayer for Sunday the 21st of June 2020, the second Sunday after Trinity and also Father's Day and the longest day. My name is Chris and I'm one of the wardens and I'm going to be leading this service today uh, along with Jeff, one of our readers. But first, some words of preparation. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. My heart tells you of your word. Seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. And now for our first hymn. Following that, I'm now going to read Psalm 116. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. I love the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he inclined his ear to me on the day I called to him. The snares of death encompassed me. The pains of hell took hold of me. By grief and sorrow was I held. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I beg you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the simple. I was brought very low and he saved me. Turn again to your rest, O oh my soul, for the Lord has been gracious to you. For you have delivered my soul from death my eyes from tears and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed that I should perish, for I was sorely troubled. And I said in my alarm, everyone is a liar. How shall I repay the Lord for all the benefits he has given me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord 
in the presence of his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. Your servant, the child of your handmaid, you have freed me from my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. As we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, may we call upon your name, raise the cup of salvation, and so proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come in glory. And now, we will join together in saying the glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And now we're going to have some Bible readings, and Katrina will be reading them to us. Reading from Romans 6, 1 to 11. Shall we go on sinning so grace may increase? By no means! We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Oh, don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Jesus Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anybody who had died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, for we know that since Christ is raised from the dead, he can no longer die again. Death has no mastery over him. Death, he died, he died to sin once and for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. The next reading is Matthew, chapter 10, verses 24 to 39. The student is not above the teacher, nor the servant above his master. It's enough for the student to be like their teacher, and the servant like their master. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roof. Do not be afraid of those that can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who destroys both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs on your head are no numbered. So don't be afraid, you are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledged me before others will also acknowledge before my father in heaven, but who disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to turn man against father, daughter against her mother, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be members of his own household. Anybody who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anybody who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their lives will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And following those readings... Uh, Jeffrey is actually one of our readers is going to give us a short reflection and he will then lead us in prayer. Well, here's another Sunday. I'm still back at Pentecost really. 
I'm really reflecting on how the apostles, once they realise they've got to go out and tell the world about Jesus, how they start to get themselves organised. They've no model to follow. It's all from scratch. They've got various issues on hand. They know that their purpose is to tell, to teach, to learn, to pass on. But they've got more immediate problems. Numbers are growing. They've got to resource themselves, finance themselves. So it's clear that a lot of people were contributing wholeheartedly to funds they needed to keep people in good spirits and looked at and cared for. And they've got a survival issue. They've got to resource themselves. Finance is only part of it. There are manpower. They appoint the deacons to assist them. And then I think, well, where are we at the minute? We're in a strange world, as we all know. From a church point of view, we haven't got an archbishop. We haven't got a bishop. We know he's coming, but he's not in place yet. We haven't got a rector. Again, we know he's coming. We just haven't got him in place yet. And we're in this strange world where we're all isolated and church itself can't operate on the way we are familiar with services and prayers and the, the gatherings together in community, which after all community, church is community and not to be able to get together is rather odd. So what are we doing? Where are we going? We do still exist. We are still here. The world may not see us, obviously, in the churches, but we are still here. And we haven't gone to sleep. We're active. We don't quite know how to handle this. It's a bit like the, bit like the uh, apostles starting from scratch with no model to form. We are in a place where we've no model to work from. We've had to work things out. We are working things out as we are. Contact with all other people who we know in church. People we know need a bit of help. I hope everyone is making a phone call to someone they know, just to say hello and to make sure they're not forgotten. Isolation's difficult, isn't it? Well, what we got? We got to organise ourselves and keep going. What does it need? The disciples, when they set out, knew they had got to tell the world about Jesus because he had come to life again on Easter Day. It just doesn't happen like that normally, but it did for Jesus and for them. And they felt they had no choice but to go out and tell. That was their purpose in life. Jesus, in his talking to them in Matthew, way before his execution and resurrection, is really priming them up to tell them that they're going to have to be wholehearted to follow him. Not just whilst he's there with them physically, but when he's gone, I think he's preparing them for when spiritually he is with them. And if they want to take him, they've got to be wholehearted in order to continue. And that's, that, that comes down to us. We remain wholehearted in our faith, I hope, our belief in our faith, what we have to pass on. Wholehearted to follow Jesus. And then what do we do? We, we, we need to resource ourselves. OK, finance is a bit tight, but we're OK there. We've got people, even if they're isolated, there are phones and Zoom calls and all the things we can do to keep in contact. And services like this where we can at least come together in small numbers and reflect on what we're about. The original apostles were under pressure to survive at all. Partly they'd organise themselves, which they were getting on with, but partly because they had real problems with the Jewish leadership, who were rather puzzled, to say the least of it. They thought they'd got rid of Jesus and all that, and here they have these guys standing up saying, oh, Jesus came to life again, and it's your fault, but we can do something about it. They haul them before the Sanhedrin twice, twice and don't really quite know what to do. But in the end, of course, they become aggressive and try to stamp them out. 
That's where Paul comes in a little later, initially helping to stamp them out, and then, of course, one of the great movers of the time, telling people in the widest possible area across to Greece, across Turkey as we now have it, and so on. We're not under pressure in the same way. We're not struggling to survive in the same way. We need to keep going. We have to be wholeheartedly for Jesus. Because we've got a message still to go on with. Paul reminds us about this. And he tells us why we can keep going. He says in his piece of Romans 6 in a minute. We were dead to sin. Jesus died to sin for us. And if we are baptised into following him, we are dead as well. Dead to sin because he was dead to sin. But he resurrected again. And therefore, having followed him to the death and shared in his death, we also share in his resurrection and are alive, free of sin. That is what Paul stamps home because it's such a great relief, such a great thing for us to build into our faith, our belief, our lives. As he really clear, spells it out for us and hands it down. So... We've got that certainty of belief that gives us faith. We are here still. We're surviving, even though it's not quite the normal style of survival. No reason why we can't keep on. Wholehearted, we'll soon have a new rector, indeed a new bishop and no doubt a new archbishop, to support and guide and lead. But that doesn't mean we can't keep going in the meantime, and we're doing moderately well, aren't we? But keeping going. How widely it is known across say Congleton that we're still here, still active, still thinking, I don't know. But we have to be prepared to keep teaching, keep telling, and coming together to at least to look after each other, so that we seem to be doing so. Yeah. Keep going folks. Each reflection or prayer is going to finish with the simple words, Holy God. The response you might like to join me with is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And I'm starting really from last week with prayers of the, to the Spirit or of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, prompt us when we kneel to pray, nearer come and teach us what we ought to say. Holy Spirit, help us daily, by thy might, what is wrong to conquer and to choose the right. Holy God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Father God, Spirit of God, we thank you for all the light, grace and life seen and known in the church which has nurtured us, praying that Still may we be set free from narrow-mindedness and complacency. Open our eyes that we may recognise the work of your Spirit among other people and under different forms. And should we yet walk in some things on separate ways, then present before us the common goal towards which we travel. Holy God, Father, Son and and Holy Spirit. A prayer from the Philippines, thinking of God, Jesus. Father God, Jesus, in these times when we fear we are losing hope or feel that our efforts are futile, let us see in our hearts and minds the image of your resurrection. And let that be our source of courage and strength, that we with that, and in your company, help us to face challenges and struggles against all that is born of injustice. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus, you are risen and ascended. You've redeemed us by your love. You give us life which is eternal. We pray you for all who walk in darkness. 
All who cry out in pain, all feel who feel beyond hope. We remember at the present those who are isolated and restricted in their movements, all who are rejected and who are outcasts in our world. Holy God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. A prayer from the Salvation Army for those in authority. Father God, give to all those people who have authority over others the wisdom to govern well and the grace to know in their hearts that nothing is firm which is not just and that the test of justice is to turn people from following after evil to seek what is good. Holy God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. A prayer for ourselves. Lord, make our hearts places of peace and our minds harbours of tranquillity. So in our souls true love for you and for one another and root deeply within us friendship and unity and concord with reverence. So may we give peace to each other sincerely and receive it beautifully. Holy God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And as we gather our prayers together, I have a prayer from Ghana, church in Ghana. O Lord our God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, listening to us here, you accept also the prayers of our sisters and brothers in Africa, Asia, the Pacific, the Americas and Europe. We are all one in prayer. So may we as one rightly carry out your commission to witness and to love in the church and throughout the world. Accept our prayers graciously even when they are somewhat strange. They are offered in Jesus' name. Holy God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. God, Holy God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, hear the prayer we offer. Not for ease that prayer shall be, but for strength that we may ever live our lives courageously. Amen. And following those prayers from Geoffrey, I'm going to read today's collect. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So gathering all our prayers together, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Uh, now we're going to have our second hymn. <laughs>
So following that hymn, we've now reached the end of our service. So now we come and say, May God, who made both heaven and earth, bless us. Amen. Thank you for being with us. And our next service is at 8.30 tomorrow morning, when I'll be leaving a short spoken morning prayer. Goodbye.